Hi everyone, Erin here again today, and I wanted to show you a fun tip and a way to use washi tape. These washi tapes are from Islet Outlet, and they're really fun, cool colors. These ones are like hexagons and little triangles and fun bright colors. This one's got little bunny rabbits on it. And what, another purpose, yes, obviously card making, which you're gonna see a cute card here at the moment, is for labeling. Why not? You have all this washi tape, and sometimes we have colors that we think are super cute and then we never use them. So what I like to use them for is to label my freezer foods. I go and I make chicken stock all the time, and it's homemade. It's really, really simple to make. So when I make a whole chicken, I do it in my crock pot. And I bake it all day, not bake it, sorry, I cook it all day in the crock pot with just an onion and some rosemary and thyme and garlic and onions. I guess onions already, anyway. And I go ahead and just cook it all day in that. I take the chicken out and then I debone it, throw all the bones back inside and whatever pieces of chicken that are too small or whatever, there's gonna be some little bits of meat here and there left on the chicken. And then I put that in the back in the crock pot at the end of dinner. I cannot write and talk at the same time, it does not work. Anyway, and then I add a ton of veggies. Throw it in there, fill it up with water, stick it on low, let it run all night, and then you strain it in a colander and all you get is this lovely chicken broth. It's a bone broth. And then I measure it out into two cup portions because I love using chicken broth instead of water when I cook my rice or I use chicken broth as a base to soups or I just use chicken broth for all kinds of stuff. And so uh, what I need is chicken broth. And so why waste the carcass of the chicken when I'm done cooking it? So instead, I'm gonna do a chicken tomorrow. I need to get some containers ready. These are left over from the last time I cooked a chicken and they're in the freezer. And what I did is I took a piece of the washi tape. I took this one right here. Um, and I cut off a strip that was long enough and then I wrote. Now I did it in a Copic marker and I just used the chisel tip end of it. And notice it will not, um, peel off. These have been sitting in the freezer for a long time and they have no problem. Not only do I label the tops so I can see them from the top, but as it's resting inside the freezer, I'll stack them up like this. I can't see the tops of all of them, so I have chicken. Because not only do I do chicken, but I also do beef broth, or I will do vegetable broth sometimes. I also make a homemade chicken, or sorry, mushroom soup. And so I leave them all in these containers and when they're frozen, you can't really see them very well. From, um, but it's just nice to have everything labeled. So, fun new way of using some washi tape. Another good re reason for doing them in these little containers is you can give them as gifts. So that's what the second part of this video is all about, is how to give these as a gift. You just saw how I use the washi tape, and here's a couple of the examples, to make um, labels on your chicken broth. What if you want to give your chicken broth as a gift? So you need to have a little card that you can add to it in a bag or just kind of pop it in on the top. Um, you could add these to a little envelope. So here's a cute way to use some of the Islet Outlet uh, brads and also some of their washi tapes. And the washi tapes match what is on the chicken broth containers. At the very end of this video, I'm gonna pop on and show you, or I will show you a little video, or continuing this video, sorry, about how I do my chicken broth. I know I mentioned earlier, but I'll put a little more lengthy. So I think we're gonna do the blue, and I like the blue with this, there's some little shades of blue in here. Um, do it with that one, it really doesn't matter, but I like these two together, so. Step one, because I'm using a blue brad, I'm gonna use the blue ink. On this one, because I used yellow brad, I used yellow ink around the stages. And here, because I had a green brad, I used green ink. So these are the inks that I was using. Uh, it's just what I had on hand. I had a Prima ink, and this is from Color Blocks. This is a clear snap. This is the mixed media ink. Since we're doing blue, I ink everything. We're gonna ink the edges. Just add something. And then we are going to stamp, oh, there's my punch. And my piece of paper, you can see we're going to do the other ones. Really quick. And I just picked a circle because it was easy. And this is not a very huge circle. So you're just going to punch a little, your circle. Ink the edges. And this is my nifty swifty little way of doing brads. Easy way of doing brads. I take, and this is just an old uh, mouse pad, which we really have no use for anymore, but I've kept it and then just a, some sort of poking material or some utensil. Some people have pokers, you could use a thumbtack, it doesn't matter. And the reason for having the foam is it allows your piercer to go through the paper. If you try to do it on just a wood table or something, a regular table, your piercer would have no place to go through the paper. So this gives you that flexibility. 
And then you just pop this in, and if it's not 100% centered, because you know the brad may be centered, but the word may not, just kind of finagle it around a little bit. Just move it, and then open it up. There you go. And the reason why I picked this particular set, let me show you the package, I'm sorry, I forgot to show this to you. So Outlet, 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 and these are spring bubble brads. And the reason I picked this particular set is because every single saying it says, be happy, hello sunshine, keep smiling. If you're gonna give somebody chicken broth, it's probably because they're not feeling so good. They're probably sick. So you wanna give them a cute little card that says, oh, I hope you feel better. And so, you know, these are all phrases that make them feel better. Now I'm just gonna put a little foam dot on the back. My scissors are going to crap. I need some new scissors very, very badly. But I keep forgetting every time I go somewhere. Um, I'm just using a Tombow foam tape. Really simple. Comes in a big giant roll so you can kind of cut off whatever size section you want. The other reason why I put the brad through a little circle and then I'm attaching that to this is because I didn't want to poke or pierce through my card. So now you open the card and you have a cute card. I did run the washi tape through, so we're gonna do that now. So we're gonna open up the washi tape, and I don't cut, ah, oh, there we go, wrong way. I don't cut my washi tape, I just tear it. It's so simple to tear. And I'm gonna line this up as evenly as I can. I use the bottom of the card as my guide and I don't like running things that are like a single layer in the middle. It kind of cuts the card in half. So to me, and visually pleasing for most people, is you run it either at the top or the bottom. With a card that opens this way, running it along the bottom, it just looks more pleasing to the eye. So this one I ran long enough so it looks like it's got a continuous banner all the way through. And what I might do is go and add a little bit of extra washi tape to finish these off just to look nicer. And now you've got your little because it already has the foam on the back. You just pop that on and boom, there you go. Quick and easy, cute little card. And now I've got three little cards ready to go whenever I need to give somebody some chicken soup. But you can also use these cards for anything. You could easily pop these into a birthday bag. I mean, they're just cute and simple little easy, quick cards. You do anything. You could change out the brad on here to be like a bumblebee. You could change it to being, if you have got a little girl, a pony. Eyelet Outlet has a ton of cute little brads. This is an easy, fun way to decorate them up. So stay tuned for the rest of the video to see the recipe for the chicken soup that I showed you at the beginning of the video. So this is my crock pot after I have gone through and cooked our chicken. So inside, you have all the bones, you have some pieces of meat that were just too small, all the onions and garlic and the juices that came off. I did not add any liquid to this. This is all juices that came out of the chicken and whatever veggies. I did add some carrots, so they haven't been cooked, that's why they look pretty whole. Um, when I cooked this, I also added in uh, lime that I just threw in and there was also some there was some rosemary and there was some thyme. And then there was salt and pepper on the chicken to begin with. So I've already pulled all of that out. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add all my greens. And like I said, I've already put carrots in. So now I'm gonna add all the greens. And I just pulled these from my garden. What these are, this is collard greens. This is um, pieces of small, um, Oh, I can't even think today. Broccoli, there is more herbs like sage. Here's a sage leaf. I rinsed it all off. Um, there's also some broccoli leaves. There is some cabbage leaves. There is, I think that's about it. So I just grabbed a bunch of what I had on hand, things that I had plenty of in the garden. So now that it's filled with veggies, you could even add eggplant, asparagus, zucchini, squash, um, Really anything that you have in hand in the fridge that you would want to have in a broth, throw in there. It's all good. So now my crock pot, after I filled all the greens and all my veggies and all the leftover bits and pieces of chicken, I just filled it up with water. Now all I'm going to do now is put my lid on, super simple, come over here and set my crock pot to low, low and slow. And all it's going to do now is it's going to simmer all evening. And then tomorrow, I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna strain this it. This is what it looks like after stewing all night. 
I have a measuring cup and some of my containers off to the side because I'm going to fill it in. And then right here in my sink, I have a strainer with a bowl on the bottom. So the strainer is going to catch all the big pieces of everything and the bowl is going to catch all the liquids. Here's all the lovely liquid now that it's done. Um, it is going to have a layer of fat at the top and it's chicken fat. Some people call it schmaltz. Um, most people call it schmaltz. And if you want, you can strain it off once it hardens and settles on the top. You can leave it in the refrigerator before you freeze it. Or you can just leave it. Now I'm measuring it with a one cup measure into my container here. And then I have a perfect two cups I'm ready. I don't mind if I have little bits of chicken left or if there's little herbs and whatnot that kind of went through the sieve. That's perfectly fine. It's really kind of up to you. Um, so you just start keep straining it into your containers, labeling them, pop them into your freezer. All my containers, now that I am done, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven containers. This one holds two cups, this one holds two cups. Each of these kind of squarish ones here hold about two and a half cups. Um, and this is what I'm going to save in the fridge for right now. I'm not actually going to freeze this one. So there's five, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and I bet there's about two cups in here. So about 16 cups of chicken broth from one carcass and a bunch of veggies and one crock pot. So my crock pot size, the standard size, I'll have to look it up and write at the bottom of the page. But you get quite a bit. I mean, each one of these is a bowl of rice or a, you know, a soup base or whatever. So lots of uses for this chicken broth. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks for stopping by and don't forget to subscribe. Bye.